the knife world is big. Overwhelmingly so. And it's growing more and more every single day. It's so big that even after you've collected and handled as many knives as I have, it's still inevitable that you will miss out on certain brands or models. There's just too much out there to keep track of. Take, for example, if you will, this. The Chavez Ultramar Liberation 229 NG10. Now, I've been aware of Chavez knives for a long time, and I've always appreciated the looks and the lines from afar. And there's a reason for that. And that clip, it's the clip. That skull clip might just be one of the most divisive pieces of knife design out there today. Either you're fine with it, or you can't run away fast enough. And until recently, I was in the latter camp. I just couldn't see myself paying that much for a knife for it to only ever be hidden away inside of a knife case of shame. <sighs> but sometimes you can't judge things based solely on the pictures and videos of it on the internet. And in the case of this beautiful full-size Rayot made frame lock, that skull clip is a small price to pay when everything else is this friggin' good. And yes, this is a full-size knife. That blade is about three and three-quarter inches long, and the overall length opened up is eight and a quarter inches. So not exactly a small knife. Now this is the quote-unquote bottom end of the Ultramar line from Chavez, but it's blown me away so much that I, I really can't even imagine how the top end models could improve on this. First off, the looks. The design here is so well balanced. Not too aggressive without feeling dainty in any way, and not too boxy, yet not at all too curvaceous or rounded off. The ergonomic lines are there without being too overwhelming, and without taking precedence over the overall aesthetic and design. And thankfully, we've got very minimal hardware, just three screws on either side holding it all together. On the lock bar side, we've got this nicely done stonewashed titanium that, with that ever-present titanium skull clip, and on the show side, you get this heavily textured black G10 scale. And from both sides, the profile is just as clean as a whistle. And there is little to no jimping to speak of at all on this knife, and we'll discuss that in the Ergos later on. Opened up, we're met with this beautiful drop point blade done up in M390 and finished off with this gorgeous belt satin finish. Ray, they really do an insanely good looking belt satin. The blade stock is nice and hefty, and I mean hefty. And we do get a nice sharpening choil that can double as a finger choil if your fingers are small enough to fit in safely. And uh, as kind of a barren and plain knife as this is overall, the little details seem to stand out that much more. Like these little grooves cut into the thumb studs. It's a nice touch. Overall, I really love the looks. I have for a long time, but having it in hand and seeing it in person, you're really able to appreciate the insanely high level of fit and finish and care that Rayot is capable of. Uh, nothing is out of place, no edges left, you know, not knocked down, and holding this piece just gives you an unmistakable feeling of quality and reliability. It, it's all good in my book. Now then, let's just jump right into the action, because the action is really where this thing impresses. It is thumb stud open only, but thanks to that scalloped area on either side and heavy chamfering on both sides, they're relatively easy to access for actuation. Now, the detent, however, is intense. Like, no joke, if you haven't already built up some heavy calluses from fidgeting with your knives, this thing will build them up so quick and in a hurry. You have to really want to get this thing open. And for the first week or so, you might also have to be willing to sacrifice use of both of your thumbs. Breaking that detent takes a substantial amount of force and willpower. But because the detent is so heavy, once you do reach the breaking point, that big pointy chunk of M390 absolutely rockets out of the handles. Without question. Without a care in the world of what stands between it and its final destination. I've not yet cut myself with this piece. Yet. But... I have opened it while my other hand was in the way, and the blade spine has damn near broken a finger or two on my left hand. It cares not for the well-being of the world around it, so keep that in mind, and keep the area clear. And because we're running on some stupid, oil-slick smooth bearings, when you go to close it and push that lock bar aside, you had better get your fingers the f*** out of the way, because the level of finger-destroying guillotine drop shuddiness on this thing is ungodly. Next level scary. For someone like me who can't seem to buy band-aids fast enough, I'm really dancing with the devil every time I carry this thing. In use, no problem. I, as safe as can be. But during my fidget sessions, it's a game of Russian roulette. The action is seriously, endlessly satisfying and impressive and horrifying. I, I mean, I figured it would be good, but this it is it's seriously excellent. Like, I have never experienced such incredibly smooth and controlled, absolute end-all, be-all drop shining this before, ever, in my life. It's incredible. 
And speaking of that blade, as I said before, the blade stock is crazy gnarly thick, and that thickness carries out all the way out to the tip. So no issues with a, a dainty tip on this beast. Uh, you know, don't pry open any paint cans. Uh, you honestly probably could. I f it. Pry, pry open some paint cans. What do I care? You do lose just a touch of cutting edge to that sharpening slash finger choil, but we're still left with plenty of usable blade. And thanks to that tall hollow grind, the chunky stock is brought all the way down to a stupid thin edge. Behind the edge, is it's a little thicker than I'm used to, but the final cutting geometry is so good that you're left with nothing less than a razor sharp, hair-splittingly slicey tank. Built like a tank, cuts like a straight razor, what else could you ask for? And finally, the ergos, and like I said before, we don't get much or anything in the way of jimping, but the ergonomic lines paired with nice texturing on that G10 scale makes this beast feel endlessly secure in the hand. Whether you're choked back or nestled up to the blade with that choil, you're absolutely locked in and ready for business. And somehow you really don't notice the outrageous skull clip in hand. Uh, it, it's there, you know it's there, you can't ever forget that it's there, but it's not uncomfortable in any way. And thanks to all that heavy chamfering, you can squeeze as hard as you please without feeling that thick boxy handle digging in anywhere. And because of the size of the handle, no matter your hand size, you shouldn't have any issues getting a full grip. Another example of a knife that is way better in hand than the looks would ever lead you to believe. And just to note on that choil, uh, speaking of games of Russian roulette, it's a little scary. Uh, it's, it's a little scary, so keep that in mind. The inside edge is a little sharp and it'll nick ya. It'll get ya. Anyway, other than that, the ergos are dynamite. So for $320 retail, where do I stand on the Chavez Ultramar Liberation 229 in G10? Well, I've been doing some digging around at the bigger retailers, and some places have it listed as discontinued, some show this variant is just out of stock, and some still have them available. So as far as this more affordable G10 variant goes, as much as I love it, I really don't know what the future holds for it. And that being said, if this is bottom of the barrel base model, if it's this good, I, I can say with almost absolute certainty that any and all of the Rayon made Chavez knives are 100% worth the money. And considering there is definitely no shortage of options, variants, and models, all I can say is find the one that speaks to you the most and grab it. You can thank me later. So, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye bye now.